ठीक है सो इट्स माई प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस क्रिस्टोस पापा दिमित्रियो एंड संतोष मेम्पाला आई मीन दिस थ्योरी कम्युनिटी सो दे डोंट नीड एनी इंट्रोडक्शन एंड दे गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट कंप्यूटेशन एंड द ब्रेन सो ओवर टू यू Thanks, many thanks, Kamesh. Uh, thank you all for being here. Sa- Santos, you want to say a word? Yes, uh, thank you very much. It's been a great journey with Christos, and, and one that's ongoing. And we hope that many of you will join us in this. Excellent. So, um, I think I'm going to share screen, uh, and uh, here we go. Uh, so. the story behind this tutorial is this that that um, uh, uh, for the past 6 years sandosh and i uh, have been uh, studying the brain uh, it's a long story uh, but the point is that uh, uh, this tutorial is has three parts the first part is all the information that uh, if we had 6 uh, years ago would have saved us 2 years okay you know so um, uh, it's uh, it's a compendium of of uh, what we think is very essential information about uh, recent understanding of the brain for any computer scientist who want to get into this uh, this endeavor uh, uh then uh, uh we'll tell you something about uh, essentially the culmination of these 6 years uh, uh, because we do have a, a formal model and theory of how the brain works uh, and 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 um, uh uh we're going to present it and uh, in the third part which i believe will be more interesting for um, uh, most of you is uh, uh, so i totally recommend the first part okay so you know, even if you don't plan to uh, to to do work on the brain but the first part we are going to um uh talk about uh, opportunities for tcs research uh, concrete tcs like problems uh, uh, which uh, first of all a few of them would advance our theory uh, but most of them would uh, would shed light on uh, various other aspects of the of the brain so um, and without further ado let's um, uh, let's start with this okay so you know question uh, in your opinion uh is the brain a computer okay so you know so um let's uh, let's do this uh, uh okay uh i'm trying to find uh, uh the uh, the the poll the polling uh button and there isn't so um we could let's poll make... by raising our hands basically sorry So yeah 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 so so, so, so let's, let's have a show of hands how many of you believe that the brain is a computer uh okay it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh thanks uh it's a slight majority uh a little weaker than uh Uh, what i get with graduate students and undergraduates okay you know so um, it's amazing what a ba- what a, what a little maturity can do for your thinking okay you know so um uh cool so let's uh, let me let me go back um uh, and and um uh, okay so let's let's see the facts uh you can read left and right so you know there there are huge differences between between um, between the computer and the brain uh, incidentally speaking about the computer and the brain there is a historical text that i completely i totally recommend uh, it's uh, by von neumann uh, written just before his death uh, uh, b- based on work in the late in the late 40s uh, the title is uh, computers and the brain and uh, it's incredible how much this giant had gotten uh, so early in the game okay about both the computers and the brain uh, in any event uh, so let me tell you our answer to uh, 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 which is less of a conviction and more of a methodological stance okay you know that uh, uh, the brain is a computer because this is our way of trying to understand the brain okay and then without without this this uh, this uh, 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 uh this fiction uh we wouldn't be able to proceed cool so let me let me tell you 
let's, let's, let's do sort of, you know, three minutes worth of historical uh, account of neuroscience. Uh, believe it or not, it started in, in southern Italy by, by uh, Alcmeon of Croton, who in 520 BC uh, uh, opined that the brain is the seat of intelligence, that it uh, communicates uh, with the outside world through channels, and this same person uh, uh, discovered and dissected the optical nerve. So, I mean, this is sort of an incredible feat uh, so early in the game. Here is something else I discovered, that this town called Croton in North, southern Italy was the same, another smallish Greek town in southern Italy, which uh, where Pythagoras taught, okay? So, these people were the intellectual superheroes, of, uh, celebrities of that town, um, and either they were friends or enemies, okay? But uh, the point is they interacted, and uh, uh, I think that's a good sign and a good thing, all right? I mean, so then Hippocrates uh, uh, supported and, and, and enhanced uh, uh, the, fi the findings of, of, of Alcmeon. Uh, Aristotle, to his embarrassment and detriment, uh, believed, uh, you know, countered, uh, you know, rejected Alcmeon and, uh, and thought that the seat of intelligence is the heart and, and that, uh, that uh, communication happens through the bloodstream. Uh, and this was a sort of, you know, a slow debate that raged for five centuries until uh, Galen, the second most famous Greek physician, uh, uh, settled it in the following way. Galen was also the imperial uh, physician and the physician of the gladiators. So he noticed that if one of his gladiators got hit in the head, then he couldn't hit stra things straight, okay? And, and he, he decided that, that Alcmeon is right. So, um, uh, I mean, no, the point of this is that this is a very ancient method of neuroscience, that truth is revealed through pathology, okay? You know, and, and this is, of course, uh, alive through today. Uh, nothing much happened uh, for a few centuries, for many centuries uh, in, in neuroscience until Galvani noticed that the neurons act through electricity. So, a very incredible discovery. Uh, Broca and Wernicke, uh, found where language happens. So, you know, we're going to talk much about, more about that. And ultimately, Camilo Golgi and Santiago Ramon Hal, uh, the two first great neuroscientists, Camilo Golgi, who is uh, a famous biologist uh, on, on, on account of other discoveries, uh, discovered, the parti discovered a particular substance, uh, uh, which is called the Golgi stain, where if you, uh, if you stain with it, uh, 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 neural tissue, it will coral, color uh, like 3% of the neurons, okay? Nobody understands how this happens, but it will completely color, select a few of the neurons and color them. And because, you know, if it colored all the neurons, you wouldn't be able to see anything. But because of that, uh, Ramon Cajal was able to see this, okay? And these are, these are the paintings of Ramon Cajal of what you saw in the Microsoft through uh, uh, the Golgi stain. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, and sort of, you know, and also very powerful scientific work. Uh, incidentally, uh, there's a book with this title and containing this, these paintings. Uh, this is the messy brain, okay? So, you know, this is uh, from, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Jeff Lichtman's lab at Harvard uh, uh, circa a few years ago. This is how the brain, this is a few cubic uh, microns of brain, okay? Sort of, you know, and uh, colors are different neurons. Uh, and it is this incredible mess that, uh, that, uh, that we abstract by a graph, okay? So, you know, so that's, that's, uh, that's just to keep in mind. Uh, okay, uh, so this is how neuroscience was born. Uh, uh, Golgi and Cajal uh, uh, shared the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the neuron. And uh, they, were, uh, they, they, uh, they disagreed uh, profoundly. Uh, on their point of view. Ramon Cajal thought that the neuron should be the, you know, we should study the neuron, whereas uh, Golgi was convinced that the brain is a network. And of course, there are some uh, cellular uh, dense points called neurons, but who cares? I mean, the network. Uh, and and uh, they, had a, they, had a, they had a famous fight during the Nobel Prize ceremony in 1906. Uh, and uh, essentially, this started neuroscience, okay, so, you know, well, I'm going to, here are the Nobels, uh, 
and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, starting, you know, so everything here, so almost to the clock, uh, there is a Nobel in neuroscience. And uh, what I'm going to tell you, you know, this the, I'm going to structure this first uh, this first lecture, this first tutorial, uh, with uh, with on the Nobel on the on these on these uh, uh, scientific achievements that uh, that that were loaded uh, by the Nobel Committee. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so this is what I'm going to uh, tell you about. Uh, and uh, incidentally. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, the Bible of you know this is you know one of the first things that uh, that that uh, Santos and I did uh, six years ago. We bought this book. Okay, so you know I, I now own three copies of this book. So uh, and I believe that I have read a sentence from each page. Okay, so you know, but it's it's a, it's a huge book, impossible to read. It's sort of but but it's ex an extremely useful uh, useful reference. Okay, uh, uh, there is another extremely useful uh, reference called Wikipedia, okay? So, you know, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, neuroscience is too huge to sort of, you know, to keep in your brain. And I have seen famous neuroscientists during talks, when they hear something they don't understand, they don't lose their cool and they, they, and they, uh, they type it on Wikipedia, okay? So, you know, so that's, that's, that's very common, okay? Uh, uh, all right, so, as I told you, uh, the neuron, the discovery of the neuron was, was a huge news uh, 114 years ago. Uh, and the neuron has this, uh, you know, the soma, which is like the, the thing, uh, the, the, the more bulky thing on the left. Uh, it has dendrites, uh, which have various geometries, but, uh, but basically they are little, little hairs that, that, that leave it. And uh, this is, it's their input device where the output device, the axon, of other neurons comes and hooks up. Uh, there is the axon, which, as I told you, is, is, is the uh, output device. The cone, which is on top of the axon where the neuron is, is born. And this is the cone is the one that leads the action to its finally, final destination. Uh, there is myelin. These are the, these are the, uh, the, uh, the little, the little uh, uh, beads that cover the axon and uh, make it uh, make it a long distance uh, transmitter uh, and uh, there is the membrane of the of the you know sorry you know, all the outside wall of the cell is called membrane and it has a potential which is crucial uh, relative to the to the to the uh, outside the world it is minus uh, 70 millivolts in steady state everything i tell you about the neuron is inaccurate in the following sense that there are an incredible variety of, 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 of kinds of neurons. And if, and, you know, when we started uh, uh, talking, uh, when we started studying, there were a few dozen. Now there are a few, many hundreds, okay? So, you know, and, and soon there will be thousands. So uh, there are many, many kinds, uh, uh, very, very different. And, uh, and uh, each one of them has an exception to everything that I told you so far, okay? Uh, but I mean, you know, one very useful dichotomy between neurons is excitatory versus inhibitory. Okay, uh, excitatory neurons are the ones that create activity and do the computation, so to speak, whereas the inhibitory neurons are the ones that uh, control and uh, make sure that the brain brain does not explode, and also that uh, that uh, the computation is 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 uh, directed where it should. Uh, okay, so that's the neuron. Uh, uh, Christos, I have a question. Uh, so, among these neurons, uh, what is the most sophisticated computational task that we know that a single neuron can perform? Excellent uh, question. So, I mean, uh, uh, the for a long time, the the uh, uh, the answer was threshold and and convex threshold, some some kind of convex threshold. Uh, now. Uh, uh, when I say now, I mean 2020. Uh, it was discovered that human neurons are different, and human neurons are are capable of non-convex. You know that's that, that was huge news. Uh, non-convex computation, uh, uh, and and uh, and so um, uh, again, sort of you know everything I tell you is going to be inaccurate in another sense that uh, that uh, that. Uh, 
every great result sort of you know it has its critics and its and its and its uh, doubters okay so so but i mean no but but uh, but this is considered a huge a huge advance uh, the fact that we realized uh, something that uh, that uh, you know about about human neurons that is special especially pyramidal cells in the second and third layer so we'll talk about that uh, so that's a neuron uh, neurons are connected by synapses what is a synapse Synapse is an attachment of an action of a neuron, of the output device of a neuron, to a dendrite, the input device of another neuron. Okay, so that's what a synapse is. Uh, it is sort of, you know, a directed arc in the in the in the in the graph that usually stands for the for the for the uh, genome for for the connectome. Uh, and uh, synapses have sort of, you know, so this is, this is uh, 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 up there, up here is the bouton, which, or button, which is sort of, you know, the, the part of the axon that attaches. This is the spine, the part of the dendrite that attaches to the bouton. Uh, between them, there is an imperceptible gap called the cleft. And this geometry, together with the overall geometry, in other words, where exactly in the axon is this is this uh, bouton, and where exactly in the dendrite is this uh, is the spine? All of this uh, determine the synaptic weight, the synaptic st the strength of the synapse. And in fact, this is not something that is that is nothing is uh, static. Okay, for example, synapses come and go. Okay, and and the, and the neuron, the axon can touch a dendrite in many places. And this uh, can uh, uh, vary from uh, four to six to ten to eleven to then back to zero, in which case there is no synapse. Uh, so uh, this is a, this is all extremely dynamic, uh, and uh, uh, the, this dynam dynamism is the basically it is is the is the power is is the is the engine of learning in the brain. Okay, because uh, uh, the plasticity. In other words, the change in the in the in the synaptic strength is the way brains learn, and uh, so it became. As I told you, it, it depends on the local geometry biochemistry, and the synaptic weights change spontaneously also, but mostly, most most uh, uh, most importantly, after a firing event. And there is the famous diction by Hebb: "Fire together, wire together." which is the following piece of wisdom, uh, immortal after, after 70 years, that says that uh, if two neurons uh, are in the same circuit and do the same work and, and, and fire together, then uh, chances are that uh, the chances are increased tremendously that uh, they have a synapse joining them. And uh, sort of, you know, the latest thing, sort of, you know, latest, 25 years old, but sort of, you know, still people are shocked by this, is something called spike timing dependent plasticity, which says that it's not just what fired and when and what is the local geometry, but also how, what is the precise fire timing of this firing relative to the firing of the, of the postsynaptic neuron. So this is a very important finding, which has completely shaped, uh, changed the, the shape of our understanding of, of how neurons spike and work uh, the last quarter century. Okay. I just wanted to um, um, sort of summarize one part of this, which is how dynamic, if you think of the brain as a graph, a directed graph, everything about it is dynamic. The, the connections are changing, the number of nodes is changing and the weights are changing. Uh, uh, yeah, so this, this, is, this seems to be a, a, a very important aspect to everything it does. And we're going to come back to this in, 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 the, third, the, third, in the third part. And of course, I mean, one thing, one thing that is interesting to remember is that the maximum number of synapses in our brain was when we were born. Okay? We are born with probably twice or three times more synapses than we have now. And uh, in some sense, out of this mess of synapses, we carved our own brain. Okay, so you know, so it's, it's so, and uh, this is a, a, a sort of, you know, a very central task of sparsification. Okay, so you know that 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 uh, that uh, that we that that if that is crying for uh, for uh, for scrutiny by computer scientists. Okay, thanks thanks a lot for all these questions and and and. Uh, uh, interrupting more often.
good so uh don't forget this okay this is the real you know this is the real picture no matter no matter how elegant and clean our theory is okay so you know it's it, you know the truth is a mess okay so you know you should not never forget that um then um uh, the next uh, uh, the next uh, nobel prize was about neurotransmitters what is neurotransmitter this is the chemical language of neuron read this sentence the main result and purpose of the firing of a neuron is the release of a neurotransmitter molecules at the synaptic clefts and their uptake by the postsynaptic neurons in other words the only reason why they fire is not because they want to talk to their postsynaptic neurons okay that's why neurons fire okay is this is this clear okay so that's that's very important and they talk through chemistry they send molecules all right i mean and this is and this is the whole thing right i mean and, and these molecules do the whole work okay including plasticity uh some neurotransmitters like glue and gaba affect the membrane potential and eventually the firing of postsynaptic neurons this is what we knew about firing right i mean if too many neurons fire then i may fire okay and this is part of the story okay so you know there are other so this is the story with uh, with uh, glue and gaba okay so you know and a few other such transmitters uh, Another, which is, was actually historically the first to be discovered, mobilizes muscle fibers. That's something completely different. And others act in more complex ways. Okay, so you know they change our mood and our, and our cognition. Uh, so that's uh, and uh, here is uh, the Wikipedia page of, of neurotransmitters. Okay, if you ask me how many neurotransmitters there are. Okay, uh, you know there is no bottom to it. Okay, so you know. Uh, you know, as with everything having to do with the brain. Okay, so you know, so it's it's hopeless to try to understand everything. Okay, so so uh, Wikipedia page has three dozens and co including two, etc. Okay, you know, so so it's it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, you know, uh, but so you know, the simple story I'm telling you is uh, probably uh, uh, probably more than enough. Uh, 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 to do meaningful research in neuroscience. Okay, so uh, uh, how are neurotransmitters released? Okay, are you ready for this? Okay, <laughs> here is how they are released. They are there are there are golf balls, so you know, full of neurotransmitters. Okay, inside inside uh, the, the, the 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 sort of the the, the bouton and uh, the axon, and these are go to the go to the to the membrane of the axon and get released in the cleft and then they are uptaken by receptors uh in the in the, in the spine okay and then as you guys you can see here so you know the these uh, these uh, these uh, these gaps these these balls uh, they are recreated and recycled and and being loaded with with the neurotransmitters so i mean uh uh so these people were able to see this in the microscope and they, they deserved a Nobel Prize for this. Uh, then, much later, people, two, two groups got the Nobel Prize for something also extremely important. Okay, so you know, in other words, you cannot think of the cell without it. And that's ion channels. The membrane of the, of the, of the, of the cell is full of these controlled holes, okay, controlled entrances that are called ion channels. And some of these entrances, uh, these are for ions to get in and out, okay, like 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 uh, chlorine or, or 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 calcium, so you know, or or or, or uh, sodium. Uh, and these are either voltage gated. In other words, when the when the voltage is high enough or low enough, the gate opens, or ligand gated, which means that they are controlled by neurotransmitters. Okay, some of these neurotransmitters, their main effect is that they go and they affect the ion channels of the target neuron okay and uh, and uh, so this is how you have excitatory and inhibitory effects and uh, the and ion gates are important because it is the ions that define the membrane potential of the neuron okay you know it's the sum of all ions that have of, the, of all positive positive ions that have come in minus the steady state and this creates sort of you know the important moment in the life of a neuron which comes sometimes a hundred times every second and that's called a spike what's a spike 
The spike is when uh, uh, the the uh, the membrane potential, uh, uh, because of the influx of positive ion channels, becomes too positive. So after several false initiations, uh, it's depolarized. It goes up, goes up enough so that uh, other ion channels open, and then uh, it's uh, you start to to uh, uh, repolarize. And then you go a little further, and you, after an oscillation, you come back to a resting state. Uh, this is called the refractory period. The neuron cannot fire in this. Actually, the neuron cannot fire for not for another five milliseconds. But nobody understands the reason for that. Okay, so uh, uh, that's uh, that's uh, 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 that's uh, uh, the spike. And uh, the spike, sort of, you know, somebody got the Nobel Prize, Hodgkin Huxley, by understanding. Uh, the differential equations, sort of, you know, with with uh, you know, in almost you know, which is almost almost an electrical circuit, uh, which uh, creates the spike. Okay, so so that's that's uh, that's a beautiful work, beautiful the first beautiful mathematical work uh, uh, in in neuroscience and got the Nobel Prize. Okay, so you know, we're waiting for the second beautiful mathematical work. Okay, that uh, of course these people also got this by by. Um, by uh, experimenting on the neuron, on the on the axon of the giant squid. Okay, the giant squid has uh, has an axon that is one meter long or more. Okay, so 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 they they uh, they uh, studied this and, and and they got a beautiful theory out. I mean, no, that's you know, and many more uh, uh, differential equation type understanding of how neur how neurons work. Good. Uh, finally. Uh, this is an important uh, Nobel Prize in 1981 uh, for work that happened in 1960, 1961, 1959. Uh, this is uh, Hubel and Wiesel's experiment uh, uh, about vision. Okay, so you know it's very important because if you understand this experiment, you understand the work that happened uh, the next 60 years in, in, in neuroscience. It set the paradigm. Okay, so you know in other words, it said. Folks, this is how you should experiment with brains. Okay, so you know, and 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 what they did is they had a uh, awake by sedated cat uh, uh, watch stuff on a, on a slide projector, literally, uh, and uh, while they were recording from its um, uh, visual cortex. Okay, the the first layers, the V1 and V2 of the visual cortex, uh, and basically what they did is they counted the spikes that uh, the every neuron they were recording from generated while uh, these the various the various uh, 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 slides were projected and uh, they noticed that for example when this line segment changes angle the the frequency of the spikes okay so you know the the uh, the spike rate, you know, the, the the firing rate of the neuron changes, and so they created a plot, okay. And they notice that there is a very pronounced maximum, and this is the the tuning curve of this neuron, okay. This means this is what this neuron, the, the this is this tells you how this neuron, so in this one dimensional plot, how this neuron reacts to the world, okay, where the world is an angle of a segment, okay. They not, you know, they they found an, an amazing number of things. For example, that our vision is uh, detecting edges, and edges consist of segments. And our first layers do this. Okay, exactly. Uh, they basically define what tuning curve is. They define how people, you know. So it, you know, everybody else in some sense has been has been trying to repro to 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 uh, extend their work. Uh, and they found neural circuits for the first time, and this was actually the genesis of convolutional neural nets, which can conquer the world 50 years later. So let me explain the last part. So here is something that they wrote in a post post mortem paper, uh, which I guess I, I believe got them at the Nobel Prize. Okay, so you know they they said, what is what are we observing? How can how can a neuron fire if there is a straight line? In the in the in the in the visual field, okay, and they said the following: It could, if it was an end gate, 
between neurons that are uh, that are correspond to retinal uh, uh, cells that are on a straight line. Okay, so basically they said, folks, this is a Boolean circuit. Okay, so you know, that, that that we have in our V1. Okay, so you know the simple cells, in other words, the ones that detect an edge in a particular point of the of the of the uh, uh, of the visual field. These are, you know, has to be a Boolean circuit. And in fact, uh, the more complex cells, which basically detect, for example, a vertical, a vertical, uh, 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 a vertical line, no matter where it is on the visual field, there must be an OR uh, a gate among simple cells that detect vertical lines in a particular position, okay? And if you think about it, uh, these were not very far from, this is sort of the basic inception of convolutional, uh, 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 of convolutional neural nets, because that's what they do, okay? They try to, to, to detect simple patterns, uh, uh, which appear, can appear anywhere in the image that they are looking at, okay? Or the pattern, uh, because, because they, they work in other fields like audio. That that uh, that they're looking to they're looking at, okay. So that was a momentous uh, momentous event in neuroscience, and in some sense was the birth of modern neuroscience. Okay, so that, that's uh, uh, and if anything, now we are in slightly postmodern neuroscience. So you know, we'll come to that. Excellent. At around the same time, uh, uh, sort of an ingenious uh, psychologist, computer scientist, philosopher called David Marr, uh, uh, sort of laid the foundations, uh, you know, he died, uh, he was my colleague at MIT, he died uh, uh, in, uh, very, very young. Uh, uh, so he, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he laid the foundations of, of computational neuroscience the in the following sense. Uh, basically, he sort of, built on the hypothesis that, that the brain is a computer and 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 uh, and proposed the following okay in order to understand a system of the brain we should uh, we should uh, you know should go through three steps first of all specs what do we expect that the input output behavior of the system is okay what is the system doing uh, second hardware what are the brain parts and processes that are implement that are that are recruited in this in this process, and second, th third, the algorithm. What in which way are these things put together? Okay, incidentally, one of uh, one of the wisest things that Mar hints at it, but uh, but von Neumann explicitly states in his in his uh, in his uh, 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 book uh, 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 the computers and the brain. Uh, is the following aphorism, okay? That once uh, students of computation will understand the brain, they will be sorely disappointed at the poor logical and algorithmic depth that uh, the, the brain uses, okay? So, um, so I mean, uh, you know, what can I say? So, you know, maybe there is, uh, there is, uh, 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 there is, uh, you know, the, the, there is no, uh, there is no sophisticated. So, you know, the most sophisticated, you know, the, there is no uh, sophisticated data structures in the brain. Okay, like, like we know how to build. Uh, finally, so you know, on that point, you know, yeah. the, the three-step program. You know, a computer scientist might ask, you know, what makes this particularly insightful? I mean, this looks like what we would do to any computer system or any system. Why is this, uh, you know, in any way um, insightful for the brain? I mean, I mean, I, 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 it's not, it's, it's been a guiding principle for, for, for us, but, um, yeah. 
So you mean you mean because it's the brain, right? <laughs> What's your answer? Uh, I mean, maybe this is this is the this is the this is the global thing, and maybe uh, you know what what we seem to have arrived at is that maybe maybe the algorithm should even be eliminated. Maybe it's even less than this. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so basic, basically, yeah, basically, yeah. That's the point. The, the, that was that was that was uh, for Neumann's point that maybe the algorithm will be incredibly simple. Okay, so you know, uh, and and uh, will typically be incredibly simple. Uh, so right, uh, the algorithm vanishes. So you know, as 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 some people say. Uh, that uh, that uh, it um, um, okay cool um, olfaction so you know uh, Buck and Axel uh, understood what olfaction is uh, how olfaction is done which sort of you know it's it's in some sense the most humble of senses okay but it's incredible sophistication okay so, it's sophisticated. so what you see here the pink stuff is uh, is the epithelium of your nose okay and there there are these strange molecules okay that are called olfactory receptors okay and they have some outlets you know that come out of your of your the epithelium and they have uh, the shape okay there are molecules that are shaped as the negatives of odorants okay so an odorant molecule comes and it matches one of these okay let's say ammonia okay right uh, so or nitrogen or so whatever so you know uh, a, a, uh, and uh, and then it excites it okay and this excitation goes to this uh, to this uh, uh, thing called the glomerulus which is specified was specific for this smell so these uh, these cells here are of uh, 500 kinds in our in our nose okay for in rats there are 2,000 kinds, okay, but we lost them along evolution because we don't need them, okay. So, and this goes further to the brain, and at some point comes to the cortex, and then we say, ah, uh, I like tarragon, okay, or something like that. Okay, so that's uh, good. So that's uh, that. That was amazing work that uh, uh, did the molecular work needed needed to to decode uh, uh, olfaction uh, smell. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, watch this thing. Okay, so you know I'm going to be talking about many of these, but uh, these are parts of the brain. This is the cortex. This is a huge part of the brain. Not huge, okay. This thing called the cerebellum has uh, three times more, more 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 neurons than, than than the cortex. Okay, but the cortex cortex means means uh, like like uh, a membrane. Uh, uh, it's about half a millimeter, uh, uh, sorry, two millimeters, uh, I forget now, maybe, 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 sorry, half a millimeter in diameter, in, 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 in uh, thickness. Uh, and here are sort of, you know, the motor cortex, this helps us move. This is the visual cortex here, so, you know, that's, uh, that's, uh, here is where we're going to be talking about this, this is where language happens, okay, so, you know, and so on. And they have this, uh, this is Wernicke's area, language. This is uh, a Broca's area, language, okay, also, okay. So, um, uh, and, uh, and uh, there's a brainstem, okay. All of them are very, very important, okay. So, you know, and, and you, you, you know, I have met, uh, I have met uh, uh, famous uh, uh, neuroscientists who told me that if I don't take into account any of these, I'm wasting my time, okay. So, you know, so, but of course, you cannot work unless you take account of only one or two of these. Okay, you know. So, um, uh, all right. So, uh, uh, incidentally, talking about parts of the brain, I don't know how many of you have noticed that uh, that uh, this famous uh, uh, depiction of God has him uh, uh, inside the brain. Okay, so you know, so this is this is uh, you know the, you know this is very close to how the brain looks, uh, which means that uh, that Michelangelo risked his life uh, painting this. Okay, for many reasons. First, he seems to be asserting that God lives in the in the 
in the human brain. Okay, you know, and and and, and uh, uh, number two, uh, she knew how the brain looks like. Okay, which we're not supposed to. Okay, so that's that's uh, okay. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, back to uh, back to the names. When you start, when you keep keep reading uh, 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 neuroscience, you will uh, you you know you you will be disoriented by by names. Unless you remember, okay, so you know that, first of all, uh, we have like five bones in our skull. The occipital bone, the temporal bone, the parietal bone, the frontal bone, okay? And, uh, and the, the cortex gets names from these bones, okay? That's, uh, so there's nothing mysterious there. And then they have strange uh, Latin names for uh, superior, inferior, caudal, rostral, and so on, okay? So that's... Uh, uh, other, you know, once, you know, this is what computer scientists, we, we understand coding, okay? So, you know, so this, uh, this, this is not, this is not, not very, uh, uh, non, not, not, not very difficult, okay? So, uh, here is, uh, let me actually show, show you this, okay? You know, uh, this is the cerebral cortex, okay? Cerebral cortex, you know, so it's, think of it as, uh, sorry, it's one and a half, okay? I could not remember the precise. It's one and a half, uh, you see, I've never done anatomy. Uh, uh, one and a half millimeters uh, thick, and it is uh, 2,500 centimeters uh, in area. Think of it, you can think of it as a napkin, okay? Uh, half a meter by half a meter, all right? As a large napkin. Uh, and of course, it's folded in strange ways. That's why it, it can fit into, into our skull. Uh, it has six layers, even though sort of, you know, there is 3A and 3B and 4A and 4B. So there are, more, there are seven layers, perhaps. And uh, it has 20 billion neurons, which is sort of like uh, three quarters of one quarter of, of all the neurons we have. And uh, the layers are meaningful. OK, so, you know, that, you know, for example, the, la the, the neurons that uh, that uh, uh, the human neurons that are different and we knew they were bigger, but now we know that, that, that than animals. But now we know that they have, they do, they do uh, uh, more. Uh, they, they are more capable. Uh, are in the second layer, okay? So you know, and the pyramidal neurons of the second layer are essentially the neurons that we are going to be talking about today, okay? So you know, these these are the, these are the neurons that that uh, that are working hardest in what we are going to talk about. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Cortex, by the way, is Latin for bark, okay? Bark, like the tree bark, okay? Uh, uh, skin, let's say. Okay, uh, how do we record from the brain? Very quick slide. There are many technologies. Uh, uh, some of them can be used on humans like EEG and fMRI. Uh, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, you know, you know, essentially fMRI, which is the most the most widely used, has terrible resolution, both spatial and and, and, and temporal. Uh, there is this amazing uh, technique which has uh, great resolution, except that it can only happen to people who are bad on their luck and, and they, they they must undergo brain surgery. Uh, and uh, and uh, then uh, these are very accurate, uh, uh, but only for animals. Okay, so so there is there are there is a and these last two are a sort of science fiction kind of stuff uh, that uh, are, are revolutionizing um, uh, neuroscience research these past uh, 10 years, okay? So, uh, and uh, I suspect that, uh, that the next Nobel Prize may go to one of these, okay? So, you know, the, to the, to a, some Nobel Prizes are given for technique, okay? So, you know, no, no neuroscience prize has been given for technique yet. Cool. Um, excellent. Uh, play cells. Uh, how many of you know about play cells? And, uh, and can, 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 you, can I see a show of hands? Uh, cool. You are in for, uh, for, uh, for a, um, uh, uh, I think you are in for a, I hope you are in for a shock. Okay. So, you know, so, here is something, okay, that, that, let me explain to you this picture. Now, this picture is a recording from uh, one neuron in one mouse, okay? This mouse had been walking within uh, this, this square space, 
uh, probably think of it as, uh, as two meters by two meters uh, for an hour. Okay, and this is the, and this is its path. All right, the red spots on the path are the particular spots where this neuron fired. Okay, this is the tuning curve of the cell of this particular neuron. Everybody gets it. The neuron never fires when they are in the upper left corner or in the upper right corner. It, it uh, only fires when it's near the lower right corner. Okay, so this little critter, okay, so you know, it brings tears to my eyes. Okay, so you know, these little critters uh, knows how to abstract the concept of space, the concept of near the, uh, the lower right corner of my nest. Okay. And this neuron, frankly, is probably not a single neuron. It's probably 50,000 neurons that they fire together. But of course, these researchers lacked into one of them, okay? And they got a Nobel Prize for this. Is everybody following? So the point is that even rats uh, abstract things, okay? And uh, here, is, uh, here is a YouTube... Uh, 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 video of the experiment, which I could show to you, but it involves some uh, manipulation that uh, that uh, uh, is risky, and I don't want to do right now. Okay, so you know, but uh, you have this, uh, you have these slides, and uh, I totally uh, uh, recommend that you do this. Okay, that that you see this video. Okay, you see how uh, by roaming through this uh, through this square uh, space. Uh, the uh, this uh, this uh, neuron reveals its uh, its uh, its focus. Uh, now, uh, fifteen years later, here is what they discovered. Okay, uh, uh, they discovered grid cells. Okay, so these are different cells in a slightly different area of the hippocampus, uh, near the hippocampus, you know, the entorhinal cortex, and uh, these cells. This particular cell fires when the neuron is anywhere near the nodes of a triangular grid of the square. This is amazing. Okay, so you know, so not only they abstract, uh, uh, they abstract space. But they understand uh, modular arithmetic, okay? So you know, and uh, so so it's it's sort of uh, uh, and apparently for some reason that is not understood, okay? So you know, so this is perhaps the first problem we worked on, okay? So you know, what makes this optimal, okay? So you know, and so you know, when you start thinking about that, you realize that uh, you don't know enough neuroscience to to do the right modeling, okay? You know, so soon, okay? So so I mean, you know, this is a problem that is still crying for an answer. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, know, to mention it, to, to mention it in the third, because uh, it's not sort of there yet, I think. So, you know, it's... it's uh, uh, so, uh, again, sort of, you know, that's... And again, so you, know, you, can, you can watch the movie of this, of this... Uh, uh, and these, these people, sort of, you know, these two groups uh, uh, with, uh, you know, made in this discovery a couple of decades apart, uh, they got the Nobel Prize uh, six years ago. Uh, and so this is a great, uh, you know, this is a very interesting, uh, 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 you know, another very interesting discovery that tells us that uh, uh, even, that even, even, even uh, uh, small animals uh, have uh, the capacity for abstraction. Okay, so I mean, you know, an interesting sort of, you know, an interesting historical thought is that uh, uh, when uh, non-Euclidean geometries were um, uh, were discovered, uh, many many educated people were appalled. Uh, they thought that that was sacrilege. That was that was that was that was uh, 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 irreverent. And uh, one of them, perhaps uh, the most prominent, was a great philosopher moral philosopher Immanuel Kant, okay? And basically, uh, he said, uh, uh, our brain is embedded in, in Euclidean geometry, okay? So, you know, so it's not, it's not healthy 
to think about other geometries, okay? Because our brain is embedded in Euclidean geometry, okay? And it's amazing, okay, that 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 uh, 200 years later, we found out that the brain has geometry, and it's not what Kant thought it was the, uh, geometry, the brain's geometry, is, okay? You know, so that's that's uh, okay. That, that, that's an interesting aside. Cool. Uh, so these are the Nobel prizes in neuroscience so far. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that brings us to the end of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, uh, part one, with with of course time to uh, to uh, uh, go back and and, uh, and uh, answer questions and, and contemplate. Uh, so what is our point? Uh, is that uh, uh, neuroscience is vast and bottomless and full of surprises and surprising gaps? Okay, so you know which sound very enticing to people who are uh, educated and, and trained like us. Uh, uh, past two decades, there is an explosive ac acceleration of results and a slow shift away from the paradigm. Okay, so, you know, so uh, in many ways, uh, the grid cells and the play cells uh, tell you that there is, uh, there is something beyond sensation beyond beyond the senses okay so you know that that there is an inner life of the brain that has nothing to do with uh, with uh, with uh, what it is sensing or it wants to do right now but it records its experiences of the world in a more abstract and productive perhaps way okay and uh, and uh, this happens in the rats who have uh, uh, who essentially have no brain beyond their uh, their senses okay but we have Hundred times more brain beyond our senses. Okay, you know, so so that's that's uh, that, that, you know when when we are interested in a human brain. So you know this should come to um, uh, uh, this should, should come into play. Uh, and uh, incidentally, something that we didn't talk about, but it is everywhere in neuroscience, is that uh, deep neural nets, which were loosely inspired by by neuroscience. Uh, when we knew next to, next to nothing about neuroscience, uh, came back to influence neuroscience. And uh, now they are becoming uh, the beloved tool of many, many neuroscientists. Okay, so, you know, so I, I sit in a neuroscience lab and when I look around me, I see postdocs and graduate students hacking neural nets. Okay, you know, so that's, that's a very common. So, you know, they, they, create, neuro, they create deep nets to compare and predict uh, uh, the brain with experiments of the brain. Uh, so, the overarching question, which we are going to articulate next, is wide open. Okay, that that really there is there is a, there is a, a, a huge question. Who, who the greatest minds in neuroscience admire, uh, admit openly that it is wide open. Okay, and that's uh, how does the mind come from the brain, okay, emerge from the brain. In other words, how can molecules and synapses and, and neurons and axons and, and this and this and this uh, three-dimensional mess that I showed you, how can uh, things like uh, 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 mathematics, planning, storytelling, language, art, you know, how can these things uh, come out of this, okay, you know, abstract concepts. Uh, Christos, we have several questions, including some from people who uh, might want to leave at one. Okay, 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 cool. cool. Yeah, 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 let's, let's, uh, let's go for it, guys. We, we, let's have it live. Yeah. Um, I can. So, we'll, 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 we'll sharing, and both, and both, uh, uh, both Santos and I are, 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 will be delighted to uh, address your questions. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you for allowing me to have this uh, great chance. Um, for me, neuroscience or the study of cognition seems to be somehow immature and somehow it seems to me ahead of its time and that we still don't have the appropriate methods to reach uh, significant conclusions. So my question is, um, within that mess, how do you navigate and how do you pick up and well define some problem to pursue? And it's totally fine to give me some subjective personal answer or even an answer and like some advice in navigating a mess like the study of consciousness or neuroscience. 
Um, you said consciousness, and I'm not going to touch this, okay, so, you know, for various reasons. Um, uh, but um, you said the mature, okay, you know, so um, uh, these are, uh, I mean, you know, these are fields uh, which, uh, uh, I mean, have, are making strides, okay, both, you know, so what we are going to say is to start the, the next, the next, the next discussion with is, uh, is uh, sort of, you know, there is neuroscience, tremendous advances, cognitive science, tremendous advances, neither of them is immature. Uh, what is lacking is the connection between them. Okay, so, you know, and this is a problem we're working on. And this is the problem to which we are proposing a solution in the next hour. Okay, so I don't know if I completely uh, I addressed your question, but this is sort of, you know, the, you know, I don't agree with you that this, this, these sciences are immature. So, you know, in the sense that, um, uh, what, what makes a science immature? I mean, why is uh, why isn't our science immature? Why is not mathematics immature? Okay, so you know, it it's, it still cannot prove uh, things that we believe is correct are correct. Okay, you know, so uh, uh, but uh, but uh, I mean, uh, they have uh, they have uh, for uh, for historical, social, uh, methodological reasons they have diverged, and they don't uh, sort of you know the, there is a huge gap both in scale and in uh, methodology between them. Okay, thank you. Sure. Somebody else? Uh, I can ask maybe. Uh, so you had mentioned that uh, Babies have a lot more uh, connections uh, than adults, and there is some pruning going on. So is this pruning the main mechanism of, for learning in babies, or is it still the synaptic plasticity? Um, I don't know the answer. Uh, I mean, I assume that both are necessary, so you know that, 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 uh, that um, uh, they... Um, uh, and and I'm sure that synaptic plasticity certainly uh, takes place in brain brain ba babies' brains also. Okay, you know. So um, I think that both are important. Incidentally, these uh, these results that I told you that that we have many more neurons that we end up with. Uh, uh, this is from uh, Lichtman's work, um, and. Uh, uh, we know it for uh, for the for the uh, uh, muscle nerves, okay, but uh, they strongly suspect it's also true uh, in the cortex as well. Uh, uh, there was a question about about. Uh, uh, how about saying that the brain is a quantum computer? Okay, so so this has been done. Okay, so you know Penrose, who just won the Nobel Prize in Physics, uh, has written uh, a book that many computer scientists called embarrassing. So you know, claiming that it is quantum phenomena that uh, that uh, uh, that create uh, uh, cognition. Okay, so you know, and and uh, uh, don't take my word on that. So you know. So, uh, read what uh, what more knowledgeable people how how they reacted to this to this conjecture. Yeah, but, but in some sense, we don't even have a Newtonian theory yet to explain the first order phenomenon. Right? So so may, maybe it would be um, more difficult, more confusing to consider quantum before knowing what to expect exactly. Yeah. That's also true, yeah. yeah. And, and regarding the maturity of the field, while of course there are huge gaps, it's raising lots of questions that need sort of conceptual answers. So for example, Christos mentioned spice, spike timing dependent plasticity. You know, it's widely observed. What's the reason why this should even be better or good? We don't have a theoretical, mathematical, sort of even conceptual explanation of why this is a this, this is a good or essential thing. 
even 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 inhibition only now we start seeing that inhibitory neurons are play a very essential role in in all kinds of things so so there are lots of questions that could have answers that are not necessarily tied to the next experiment place cells and grid cells were of course fantastic ones yeah especially grid cells so you know you see that 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 there is a preferred geometry that you don't uh... Uh, you know, a fascinating question is uh, now they are measuring grid cells in bats, okay, uh, three-dimensional grid cells, okay, and and they are not they are not uh, uh, periodic, okay. So you know, what does this mean? What's going on? Okay, and that's uh, 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 there is uh, the, there is uh, no end to the fascinating questions that you know uh, uh, that arise here. Uh, there was another question about uh, uh, babies have the highest number of synapses. Yes, that's what I said, and that's what is uh, sort of uh, generally believed that uh, 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 we carve uh, we we carve through pruning through sparsifying. Okay, so you know, and and uh, uh, I mean, if you think about it, every neuron is going to take part in a few circuits, okay? Uh, in the beginning, there is uh, there are many possibilities, okay? Could be taking part in many circuits, okay? So, so uh, after a while, and through maybe spike time independent plasticity or plasticity, so, you know, it realizes that there are only a few of these, or, you know, and then the rest uh, atrophy. I mean, this, is, this, this could be one, uh, one, uh, one mechanism. But I mean, no. Uh, uh, Sort of, you know, there is there is great computer science to be done in this special topic of of pruning. Okay, so you know, we're going to talk about that in in the third part of the of the of the, of the tutorial. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, first thanks, uh, Christo and Santosh for preparing this great uh, tutorials. So my question is more on uh, what approach my uh, TCS can contribute in neuroscience. So I personally, as a PhD student, I also work a little bit on this direction. And I found that, so for neuroscience, science is more nature science. So they, they want uh, maybe more like biological possibility, feasibility. While TCS is more like, a, we, are, we are more a mathematical foundation. We care about like a provable analysis. So I'm, so maybe, in, uh, I mean, maybe there are two approaches potential can be done here. One is more like we're using our uh, analysis tool to analyze some certain complicated neuroscience model, yeah, which they don't know how to analyze and provide new insights. But another uh, approach might be like if we can identify certain phenomenon, for example, this is what basically what com content computation is doing, and then try to build on top of that and, and and discuss new algorithmic insight or other stuff. But maybe that direction is more, I mean, less uh, biologically plausible. So which uh, approach do you think is uh, more appropriate or more promising for TCS people? I mean, listen, so, you know, helping, helping uh, algorithmically neuroscientists is of course a fantastic, fan fantastic work. And, uh, and uh, also helps us uh, get closer to neuroscience, understanding more neuroscience. So you know, it's uh, we are all for this. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not particular, I'm not personally doing it, but uh, but uh, uh, I I know many people who do. Okay. So uh, on the other hand, sort of you know, what that can computer science contribute? Let me tell you this: that in the late '90s, uh, a lot of theoretical physicists, in other words, great mathematicians who think about the universe. Okay. So you know, they they got into neuroscience and they uh, they made a lot of contributions okay so you know so one of them so you know one of the one of the leaders is uh, somebody at columbia called larry abbott uh, and uh, i mean you know I, I i am in his i sort of you know i i sit in his lab and what you know what what i see about him is the following that basically he works with 24 different labs in columbia okay so you know and basically he's there math expert okay their, their theory the theoretical physics expert okay you know and gives them insights 
sort of you know and 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 uh, helps them do research and does the research with them and now he's also very well versed in what they're doing okay so you know so he has come very much closer to this and helps them do the next experiment and so on so what i'm saying is that uh, uh, the theoretical physicists brought their intellectual the intellectual core of their field into 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 uh, into uh, uh, neuroscience okay i believe that we can do that so we can do this okay we can also do this and uh, that they need it uh, uh, arguably as much not more if not more do I make sense? Did, did, did my answer make sense? You know, the, this is my sort of, you know, uh, I know history never, never repeats itself and so on, but this is my, uh, my um, sort of uh, uh, approach and inspiration in doing this. Thank you. And maybe a further question is like, so, but for maybe uh, for younger uh, researcher in TCS, like, like me as a still graduate student, yeah, maybe I because I'm not that mature as like Larry Abbott, yeah, who is already very known in, in, in certain fields. Yeah, so do you have any concrete suggestions for young TCS researcher who are who's who are interested in uh, doing neuroscience? Right. Um, listen, okay, so you know if uh, if uh, uh, in, in many ways, sort of, you know, it could be that you have no choice but to do it now that we are hooked, okay? So, you know, now, now that you know what, okay? So, uh, I'll tell you this, okay? Sort of, you know, that, uh, that I don't want to scare you, but I mean, you know, I have, I have not involved any, under any, any PhD student, any of my CS PhD students in this, okay? So, sort of, you know, and the reason is that it's a little sort of uh, iffy, okay? So, you know, that, that uh, will neuroscience departments hire them when they graduate, so, you know, and, and uh, how, how are they going to explain to computer science departments what they're doing, okay? So, you know, it's what they're doing is theory about, uh, you know. Now, if they help neuroscientists also, that's, that, that, that makes them, their portfolio more diverse and more, and more um, uh, desirable. But uh, uh, also, now I do have a third year student involved Okay, in the, that's the past. Okay, now I do have a third year student involved in, in, in my, my neuroscience work. And uh, so, you know, I, I think that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, they're going to do well. Okay, you know, so, um, so this is, I mean, uh, I mean, I have nothing else to tell you, but go for it. Okay, because, because, because it's, it's, uh, because uh, uh, it's beautiful. And it's going to be bigger and bigger. Santos, what do you say? I, I completely agree. I mean, uh, you, there's a track record of uh, computer science doing this, right? I mean, economics, for example, it's a great success of computer scientists taking this view and computer science com uh, uh, departments are happy to hire them for all their new insights and biology also in, 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 a, in a different sense. Uh, and now we're at the point where maybe there are lots of good questions which need mathematical answers, modeling answers, you know, even experimental answers. And the whole sort of confluence of, of, of machine learning with neuroscience is also another very fertile thing that I think TCS researchers are particularly well placed to, to, to make progress on. So I think this is a great time for a new graduate student. And uh, I'm, I like Christos, not discouraging my uh, new graduate students from this area. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not discouraging now either okay so you know i was i was a little more hesitant the first few years you know but 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 now i have i have a third year student working working on on language so thank you thank you so much for the response sure. i guess we can take a five minute break we'll restart at 115 okay. yeah